some things in envelopes and boxes arrived. So something called audio adapter sounds interesting to start with. And there's two. These are both identical four pin plugs. The reason I need stuff like this is when I need to interface maybe with an audio board and at the same time, maybe on a line in somewhere else, I can make my own custom little cable if I only need to go so far and I have a 10 foot cable I don't want to deal with, or if I just need to be able to probe and access these connections. I've got a whole collection of things similar to this, but I needed some of these four conductors. This one said diodes before I burned it off. It comes with a sort of packing list that says 2N5088. That sounds more like transistors. And I think they might be small signal, like audio amplifier. It rings a bell. I was ordering something like that. It looks like the right part number, but of course who knows if they're real or if the quality is up to par. I'll leave that for a future study. Both of these also say diodes, and so they're possibly LEDs because I ordered some orange ones and I can't remember what else. Oh, there's orange. Clear. Oh, two pin. Are they like red and green bidirectional or red and blue or something? Oh, wait, there's more. Okay, well that says S or 5. That doesn't say anything, nor that. So, are these just in separate bags for these two because they had them pre-counted that way? Or are they different? Well, the orange, that's very orange. So yeah, just something unique for PCBs when you get tired of red and green. This one, oh, RGB auto switching, right. So it looks like these kind of slowly change colors between patterns. Yeah, I remember this now. I totally thought this was just like, green one way, red the other. Okay, I better keep these separated. All oh, those are even slower moving. I guess the other ones were fast. So yeah, I remember I just wanted to get some of these in the collection because you can do some interesting tricks with these. This one's going really slow transitioning. Does it just fade between colors? I don't see any other blinking patterns. but. One trick that can be done with these kind of changing LEDs. So maybe the S means slow switching, but given that these are two pin LEDs, when you connect it up to a power source with a resistor, if you take the output of the resistor to LED junction, let's say there's a terminal to ground and then a resistor to VCC, the in-between junction, that's gonna change as you have different activity here because there's different forward voltages on different color LEDs. Plus, as they are flickering on and off, you really get some pulse waveforms. So you can do fancy tricks and use that as a bit of a system clock as well. So I thought might be fun to experiment with. This says sensor trigger drum disc. Huh. What? A bag in a bag. It's not open. Oh, there's a cut. Oh yes, those tiny disks transducers. So these are the smaller version of this, which I also got recently. And I just wanted some variety as well as some spares in case something goes wrong. And I've been working on a bit of a signal conditioning circuit here so that I can use these as, as they were described, drum triggers. 
I'm working on a circuit for that, and I'm going to make a PCB with this circuit, be able to plug in a bunch of these, and trigger sounds on a teensy. I didn't realize these would be this small, but maybe they're still perfectly useful. Like a simple vibration detection, if you put that onto something and it can pick up activity. Speaking of that project, while I'm here, I got this today, so I'm pretty sure this is the PCBs that I designed for that project. And I gotta open these anyway, so might as well do it now. What did we get? Another pen, because I don't have enough of those. And this is only what I have available right now. There's probably lots packed in a box. I have not had these stickers yet. Those will go on the sticker wall when I eventually unpack all my stuff and get settled. So this board basically contains this circuit, and there will be screw terminals or headers to plug these sensors in, and the outputs will go to some other board and pick up the signals. We'll have to do a project with this soon. And considering this is going to have four of these sensor inputs per board, and I tried to design them so I can stack them side by side and just have as many as I need, when I'm testing and debugging this, it would be convenient to have more than my old 13-year-old two-channel scope with, you know, 400 mega samples per second. It's just low resolution, tiny screen. So I ordered something else. My old two-channel scope is 13 years old, and even when I got it, I really wished I had four channels. And budget is limited, but with the help of patrons, at least now I have four channels, even though it's still 100 megahertz, on this Siglent SDS1104XE, which I know can be possibly hacked to 200 megahertz, but I'm not sure if the hardware is the same inside, and if it would be in spec calibrated and all that, but whatever, it's hackable. Oh yeah, having three channels on at once, and I still have an extra channel, much better than just trying to decide what two channels are most important, and maybe having to hook things up and do multiple tests and not able to trigger something and see other stuff. Definitely a big overdue upgrade. And for that, I owe a big thanks to Patreon supporters. Definitely helped enable me to make that happen, along with many other things. So, I need to um, go... Hey, look, it picks up the vibration noise on the desk. I need to go put some of this stuff to use, get this project committed and tested and a video made. So thanks for tuning in, seeing what's going on. Again, big thanks to Patreon supporters. I'll see you on the next video.